Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about the process. The process. And what brought this on is I keep getting lots of messages about like, oh, hey, you gave up 3D printing molds. Oh, hey, you got a CNC machine. You don't 3D print molds anymore. And nothing could be further from the truth. I 3D print a lot of molds all the time, every day almost. It's just now part of the process. So I thought it would be good to break down my current process on how a design goes from basically my head all the way through to production uh, at WM Bayou. So hopefully it's helpful from the standpoint where, you know, maybe you have part of the process that I'm missing that you can help me and laying out my process might help you make better lures because I found that when I don't follow this process, it leads to a lot of mistakes and it takes a lot longer to get a working bait. So let's talk about step one of the process. That is really deciding what kind of lure you're gonna make. Now, I know this seems like super basic and stupid, right? And maybe that's because I'm basic and stupid, but I used to not do this, right? I would sit down in front of Fusion and be like, okay, uh, let's see what happens if I loft these two things here and do this. And oh, that kind of looks like a swim bait. Okay, well, let's, you know, put a tail on it. and that, yeah, it just uh, never works. You work yourself into corners and all kinds of mess. So, you know, pick at least a style of bait you're gonna do. You know, am I making a worm? Am I making a, a short worm for a net? Am I making a swim bait, paddle tail, twitch bait, chatterbait trailer, whatever it is, figure it out and start from there. Step two is figuring out what your rough dimensions are. Making a seven inch swim bait is substantially different than making a two and three quarter inch swim bait, right? A uh, lot of different things going on there. And this is where I really find parameters comes in handy. You know, you can write these down on paper as well. I'm doing all my design in Fusion 360. So I just put them directly into the software uh, in the form of parameters. And so you can use those throughout your design. And if you need to change them, you just go in there and change them whenever you want and the design will update automatically. So, you know, if you found that, you know, instead of a two and a half inch swim bait, you want to make it a two and three quarters inch, that's an easy thing to change right up here in the software and the design updates automatically. Okay, the next step of the process is really kind of the first prototype. And there's two ways to do this. One is if I'm making a lure that I've never made before, really a style of lure I've never made before, right? So you're making a creature bait for the first time. Sometimes it's helpful to print out the bait itself, right? The, the quote unquote master. Just to hold it in your hand, look at it to see if it looks correct. Uh, I personally have a hard time kind of, if it's only in the computer, really kind of visualizing how big this is, you know, where it's gonna sit, how it's gonna look on the hook all that kind of stuff. And you can use a resin printer for this. You can use an FDM printer for this. I've been using my FDM uh, printer, my Bamboo Labs P1P, review coming up soon, uh, for this because it's, it's wicked fast. And so you can just knock these out really quickly and kind of get a feel of like, okay, you know, this head part just seems way too big for the hook. I don't know what I was thinking. And you know, then you go back and adjust those parameters that we were just talking about, and then it's easy to make those rapid modifications. So the other part of prototyping is if you already feel pretty good about this uh, design, you just go straight to a 3D printed mold. And I usually make a single cavity mold, uh, especially at this point, because I don't know kind of what, uh, you know, it's gonna look like. Make it small, save resin, and uh, you know, I'm not really worried about denting at this point. You know, I'm worried about venting because I want to shoot correctly, but I'm not really doing kind of a final mold design. I'm doing the bare minimum of what it takes to get a bait on the hook at this point, soft plastic bait on the hook and get fishing. So quick, dirty, minimal amount of resin as possible. I have an upcoming video on how to save resin when you're printing molds that I've uh, started doing lately that's just saved me an absolute crap ton of resin. Because at this point, you don't want to waste a ton of resin on, again, a lure that you're not quite sure that you have everything down correctly. Uh, you know, the things that go wrong at this point is, you know, maybe you want this uh, claw to flap, but it's too thick or it's too thin and it like, uh, you know, curls up on the hook or something like that, right? So this is where we're trying to kind of weed out all of those details. The knockoff check. Whoa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god, that scared the crap out of me. That's a good fish, bro. Oh, stay on, bro, stay on. Yeah! Oh my god, dude, I almost had a heart attack. Jesus, dude. 
babbling about Chinese lure manufacturers and this guy's friggin' inhaled it. Look at that guy. Ooh, nice one. Saw a little two pounder probably. Yeah, that's why I don't like treble hooks. All right, bro. Nice. Maybe even two and a half pounder. Scared the shit out of me. Tail is a little uh, worked up already. Probably already on his bed. Woo. So now we're going to the testing of the lure. And there's really, again, kind of a couple of different ways. You know, I have an aquarium here that I will dunk the lure in there to kind of see the action if it's a, um, if it's a jigging lure, right? If it's a worm, I might look at the fall rate, things like that. But I find the best way to test it is actually to take it out and throw it and go fishing. You get the full kind of feel for stuff, right? I have this bluegill lure that is fantastic lure. It's really cool, has awesome action, good profile. You know, but the flatness of it makes casting it into the wind difficult. And so, you know, that's something that you will only find out when you get out there and start fishing. And it's, it's important to know, like that, that may or may not kill that lure. I don't know yet, but it's, uh, you know, something to keep in mind that, you know, if you have a, a lure that you can only cast like three feet into the wind because it catches the wind so much, that might not be something you want to actually go forward with. Hey, let me know in the comments if you want me to release this bluegill lure. It's, uh, it's really cool, man, uh, other than the catching of the wind piece. So uh, I think I want to release it. Let me know what you think. So now it's time for like the final production mold. So we have our bait finalized. We're good to go. You don't want to make any changes to it at this point, right? Because, uh, you know, you're going to potentially introduce new problems and then you're wasting a bunch of machine time and a bunch of aluminum. You know, the aluminum is... For most of my molds, cost roughly, oh gosh, probably two to three times as much as the resin. Obviously depends on the bait, right? Smaller baits cost less than resin. Um, but you really kind of want to get this right from the start, at least from a lure standpoint, right? You'll have a lot to learn on the CNC side if you're doing it yourself, but uh, you should be good to go. And again, I'm doing it for production, so I want as many cavities as I can possibly reasonably fit in here to uh, produce as many baits in one shot as possible. And then, is this making baits, man? You're good to go. So I hope that was helpful. If I missed anything, if you got any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Take care, tight lines.